Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Show. My name is Ben Maldonado, and as always, I'm here with my partner, Barry Hedarachi. Barry, how we doing? Doing great, doing great. We have a That's busy, good. We have a busy uh, session today, looks like. Yeah, very, very busy. We are recording uh, Friday, the 15th of March at about 1230 Eastern Time, so halfway through the session. Uh, and there is a lot to cover on the show. Of course, we're going to cover the normal big five with Barry, which is the ES, bonds, uh, gold, crude oil, uh, the dollar, copper, the euro, uh, and even touches on that gas a little bit there as well. So we'll cover mm -hmm. all those. And then on the commodity side, a lot of the triangles and a lot of the consolidations we've been looking at have been breaking, so we've got a lot to cover. We're gonna we're gonna touch on corn, soybeans, cotton, gold, silver, copper, crude, nat gas. Without any ado, let's jump in because there are big things happening in ES, and we mm -hmm. need to talk about that. Right. And yes. your chart there is a is a perfect picture of why it's important that we talk about this. All right. So we left off last week with 5,200 being sort of the key level to watch. As always, mm -hmm. when we have levels, we talk about, you know, we were watching to see if the market can hold above it or not. And in this case, uh, we got into the target range that we had laid out a couple of weeks ago. We got up right in the middle of it and we reversed. And now we're trading below 5,200. So this is the, the futures market. So what's important about all of this? Well, what's important is we have we're doing this. We hit the 5200, which is 135 degrees up in the futures market. And in time, we just did 135 degrees in time, which we can think of it as calendar days. Mm -hmm. and, and that would work just fine. But I think it would make more sense to look at the cash index. just nice and clean. There we go. Yeah, that is nice. And here we also drew up a little box. I don't know if you can see that right there uh, a, a couple of weeks back. And the idea was, you know, at the time I was talking about how perfect it would be if we can get right up into that <laughs> because we'd have a 135 by 135 square. Yeah, that's big. Mm -hmm, that's big. And, and how that could, you know, potentially finish up this leg, finish up this uh, up move. Well, so far what we have is, you know, we bumped up into it one day back. One day pull, counter trend, a little bit of a very narrow range day. And we took out the low of that day yesterday and we're going lower today. So when we talk about, you know, the high coming in and then a lower high coming in, this is what we're talking about. This is a good mm -hmm. real time, you know, example of that. So here's the high coming in, in right into the box and one day down, one day up, and we're going lower after that. <laughs> Yeah. And that was an inside bar, actually, wasn't it? This yeah. Yeah, inside bar there. So mm -hmm. the low of the inside bar getting taken out, uh, very weak. And we already had a square in place. So that's a uh, given. So what does all that mean? Well, the, the big deal here is that could finish the leg, just like I said earlier. And if that's the case, we could, you know, we could we could start a, a, a new down leg, not just a correction, but, you know, we could go down. Potentially, we could go down 90 days, <laughs> okay? I'm and going saying, down to the 90 would not be a big deal either. Going down to the 90 wouldn't it be perfectly normal, and it'll everything would still be very bullish, mm -hmm. and it would be a you know let's just say a healthy long term correction. Sure, and that would be around 48 30. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's cash. Point. That's cash. 48 30 yeah, cash. Yeah. And that's so this this is the potential. We can go down 45 days. That'll be down into end of April mm -hmm. and making a low over there. Now, you know, once a high comes in, we really need confirmation on the weekly basis and so forth, and a counter trend on the weekly. This is the daily. So counter trend on the weekly to kind of assess the bigger situation, see if it's a longer term high. Mm -hmm. It's just a quick sort of a quick correction. Right. within the bull market and so forth and so on. But here the deal is to say that, you know, being long now that this sort of clicked into place is risky. High risk. Yep. High risk. It wasn't all this time, but it is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we have, that's we, right. Because we, because we are very clear where that, that price and time came together very, in, a, in a clean way. So that's that's pretty much it for the daily. There is some weight behind that. You know, um, oh, here's a speaking on the weekly. I was about to go to the week, 
the weekly charts, and this is the weekly cash. And this is some geometry I did a while back, and I didn't know it was going to come up up to this circle or not, or where. <laughs> and I had marked off a couple of potential windows in you know, late April, early May. But the geometry is geometry. And the idea here is the way these circles are drawn, if, if you know, the circle is obviously resistance. So when price gets up there, we would expect it to turn down. And, and this is the weekly, turn down and then potentially make a lower high and then choose a new direction to the, to the downside. Uh, to the flip, flip side, what can happen is if we break this high and move higher, you know, that would give us an entire another leg to the upside. So that's, we got to keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Right. And that big ABCD finishing up from the October 22 low is big as well. Exactly. Very big. Mm -hmm. so let's go back to our regular chart, regular weekly chart. There it is. And mm -hmm. we've had this ABCD put on here. Ever since we took out the 81, the, the top of the square of 81, we finally got there. Ben, how about that? And, yep. Um, like a magnet, it just pulls price up into it. <laughs> pulled it right up into it. And I don't know if you guys can see this trend line. We tapped it perfectly, you know, from mm -hmm. the bottom, from, from coming from below. So all of that adds up. You know, we have, so the weekly hit, hit a point. The dailies, we have squares. So I think we can safely say we have some resistance and we have enough to sort of call a, a high and high in place. The now other thing, we, Barry, on the, on a monthly, you and I were talking about this earlier in the week. Uh, you, you put a monthly 144 square on the 2009 lows. Mm -hmm. And we are just shy of 288 by a 180 this wow. month okay 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 that's you know so two 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 squares of 144 up mm -hmm. and 180 in time okay that's pretty good <laughs> that's a huge square mm -hmm. and look at this you know if you look at that's a good one on, on the large that's what i mean it, it, so there's a potential for this to be a you know a high giving us at least a three-month correction the potential's there yeah you know yeah uh, it yep. could be shorter depending on, you know, sort of what's in store, but uh, because of that monthly that you just talked about and the weekly, I mean, here, the square is 72, we're, we're up 72 weeks, uh, plus or minus one week, mm -hmm. which is close enough for a square, <laughs> just kind of how it works. Right. And by 108. So this is very strong for a weekly. And I, and plus we have the ABCD completing it. I can't not call this out. So it, it's, it's too important. So that's what it is. <laughs> I think the message and the message is, is that yes, on the shorter time frames like a daily and, you know, you can go down to four hour or 60 minute. There's some mm -hmm. things completing, but there's also potentially things completing on a much bigger time frame, monthly, well, like weekly months, basis. Yeah. Yeah. And those so, are very, very big. Yep. Yep. It's, yep. It, it needs to be noted and paid attention to at this point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we've been waiting for this stuff for, you know, weeks and months for this yeah. thing to show up and after mapping it all out. So now we're here. So there it is. <laughs> yeah. And, and we also have, you saw in the cash, cash chart, you know, we had a high, we had a lower high in place. Mm -hmm. Now futures, it's not quite in place yet, but the cash is. So yep. let's see how all that works out. Let's move on to bonds. Bonds are also telling a story. Mm-hmm. Bonds, we talked about, you know, if we broke out of this range, you know, this this 119, 16 area was resistance, and we had a whole box up here. And we mm -hmm. and we saw how it sort of broke out. Now we see that the breakout was sort of a false break. If it broke out, you know, once you break out of a range, it needs to come up and sit on top of it, not ex exactly get into the smack in the middle of it. Not not mm -hmm. if it's strong. And in this case, not only did we get through the middle, we got through the bottom. <laughs> Got through yeah. 1916 uh, and now we're at 1824. And and we talked about this low in bonds when it came in and uh, with the ABCD. And, and the comment there was, sure, this could hold, but we really have to be careful the second time around. If we, if we take out these lows around 17, 
1718, 17, well, what is, let's say 1726. If we take these lows out, you know, the market could really pick up some speed and, and get to 16. And if that goes, then we have a long way to go and possibly right. new lows. Yeah. You know, eventually. So that's and you could st- and you should see those lower highs coming in too. That's just they they can't get it, you know, back to where it was a few months ago. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And this is the trend we've been, you know, we talked about last week. We talked about the seventy-two and how this is a lower high, and mm-hmm. we're making lower lows. So here's another lower high. Lower high. Yep. You know, and now we're just sort of waiting for a <laughs> lower low to show up. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah it's it's all uh, trending perfectly. So we'll let that be. That's our take on bonds. Mm-hmm. Moving on to the weekly bonds, it's a much clearer picture. It looks 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 good, mainly because we had this box drawn in as you know a lot of overhead, and one twenty eight oh seven was sort of the major resistance level that you know the bonds would have to take out in order to set up some kind of an uptrend. Couldn't quite get close to that really you know barely kind of penetrated into the um, this resistance zone up here and we reversed we took out last week's low to me it looks like 114 area is the next stop come back and retest that and failing that we should take out this low and and you know Barry another thing after that initial push up off the low mm-hmm. this past week this past little push up that was there mm-hmm. could only manage two up bars Exactly. Yeah. And and yep. so it's it's really struggling there. Mm-hmm. And before that it was one one week up. One up bar, yeah. And before that an inside bar. So it's just weak as anything. I'll get out, you know? Yeah. So if we make a new low here, we take out the swing low, then it, it's it, it's in really weak condition. I think we're gonna trend's gonna continue. Uh at to fourteen. If we take out fourteen, then I think new lows are in the horizon. And given the recent history of what's been happening you know with bonds and and stocks the correlation Mm -hmm. if the bond market's weak that is going to be a heck of a headwind for equities exactly yep yep so we'll see yeah yep writing's on the wall eh that's Mm -hmm. that's what's happening here next we move on to crude one of our favorites pretty much worked out the way we talked about last week and last couple of weeks or three weeks even you know we had this 50 percent level around 77 and before that it was 73 we talked about how if it's above 77 you know it's in a strong position it could run which it did (laughs) but last week we also talked about this trend line coming from the highs and how if it doesn't you know it was getting squeezed between the trend line and the 50 percent line and how one of them has to give and that would be the direction so you know obviously the 50 percent line held Trend line is penetrated, and now 83 looks like the next stop. And if we get above 83 and settle, we have 91 next to deal with. So it's clearly going higher, and I don't see how oil going higher, bonds are also going to rally, (laughs) and inflation would not be in the air, you know? Yep. And uh, so this is sort of telling a story. I would definitely follow that. Moving on to the weekly crude, we have a very strong bar. Uh, definitely came down into, here, let me zoom in a little bit. Is that better? Mm-hmm. Picture, yeah. So we had an inside bar, you know, had our classic fake, went, you know, went out, took out the last week's low. The low, yeah. Came back up, closing at the, near the highs. I would say this is very bullish and Basis the weekly, if we can hold above 79, it's in a very strong position. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's that. <laughs> well, if you guys go back and you know watch all the old shows, I mean, we talked about the lows here being you know uh, solid, and how once we get about the 50 percent level, it's going to pick up steam, which was 73, and all of that has happened, and it's sort of rolling forward now, and it looks looks bullish. It looks strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it's taking its time, and we call that the square fifty-four by fifty-four from this high. Square yeah, it out. That was the call. See. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you can see how it's been making these higher lows. So it's it's on a good trend. 
pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. not vertical like some of these tech stocks, <laughs> but it's right. You know, but it's moving. Here's the gold chart, daily gold chart. We went up 90 degrees, and we talked about how that's resistance, and we really need to settle above that level in order to move higher. And that level 2200. The actual 90 degree mark is let's say 2190. So for anything else to happen, for it to really begin the next leg, it would have to clear 2190 and settle above it. In the meantime, any corrections, I mean, the correction coming even coming down to 2100 is very, very bullish. There's no question. So it's just really a matter mm-hmm. of watching where the correction ends. Yeah, I mean, above 2150 would be great, which, which is old high. In general, this seems to be. So if we were to duplicate this box, so a correction even coming down into 2110, no problem. All right. Anything you want to add to gold? I'm, I'm going to touch on it briefly. I just want to show... Uh you know the the triangle where it's forming on a daily it's just on perfect mm-hmm. support on mine mm-hmm. on my mm-hmm. chart so here's the weekly gold 2100 i had dropped a line the idea there being long as we're above that gold is super bullish mm-hmm. and if it consolidates here still bullish <laughs> everything's bullish about 2100 right and the next next big square is really at that 24 22 and this has come from this square is an old. Um, it's a big. It's a big square. From back in '99, it looks like coming from the '99 low. Mm-hmm. And you know, it takes a while to get to these highs, but really, if we can clear this 50% level, which we have done, mm-hmm. uh, then the next level coming up is 270 degrees up, which would be around 2434. Nice. Yeah, it, it's it's huge. Mm-hmm. So for now, it's really about the counter trends, how how bullish they are. And um, we talked about those numbers on the daily. But above 2,100, this thing's still on fire. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't question anything. <laughs> Remember how dull all the metals were? Gold, silver, copper, you know, two, three, four yeah. weeks ago, a couple months exactly. ago. They were all What's in it? triangles, just, just look at this. Yeah. sloshing back and forth. And when it, when those triangles break... And it's happening to all three markets right now. Yep, yep. So that's looking pretty good. Throwing off the metals. Let's take a look at copper. There you go. Yep. So the copper story was we dropped this box in, you know, boxing up the sort of the consolidation. We came off the last lows, which sort of did a false break. And the next key thing was it it was able to hold above the 50% of the square which is 384, 383, 384. And you can see how cleanly it you know, held above it, started making higher lows. And finally this week, we broke through that, you know, the whole box of consolidation and cleanly broke mm-hmm. out. And strongly, yep. Yep, yep. Very, looking very good. So the next level of resistance, minor resistance is 419. And if we can clear that, you know, we're going to get above 450. 454 is really 90 degrees up from that low. Back mm-hmm. in July of 22, so copper's looking good. Long time waiting. So th- you know, we we talk, I think we talked about this long consolidations last week, the week before. Following those, we get really you know powerful good long, moves. Good long, yeah, good long powerful moves. So if you don't believe it, go look at cocoa. It's still going up, <laughs> and you can't stop them once they get go- rolling. Oh it's my god, good. it is a monster, monster, monster. Mm-hmm. It's up eight percent today. Wow. Yeah. Yep. That's huge. Yeah. It's in a blow off phase, but it's yeah. there. Mm-hmm. So copper, who knows? It, it, it could get to that level, that type of move. But for now, we know it's breaking out. It's leaving the consolidation area. So it's very looking very bullish. And if you were <laughs> avoiding the uh, sideways, this is a good time to start looking at getting involved. Yeah. It's funny, Barry, in my notes for Coco, I was saying the, the daily is going for 360 up, which is around 8,000. The mm. weekly's going for 180 up, which is around the same. And the monthly's going for 90, which is around the same. The high wow. today, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know when it was going to be, but the high today on Coco, mm-hmm. 8,045. Wow. Amazing. And do you see any news on that? There's no headline. No, no, no parabolic. Headline. It's just parabolic this last few weeks. Yep. And and, and you you were talking about this back in 2020. I remember. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> it know? was in that because it had that 
you know, almost a the decade long part. consolidation. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Power of long terms, eh? Yeah. So I'm going to delete this ABCD. Looks like we're break breaking out nicely. Last week we talked about how we broke the triangle and we came back and tested pulled, it. Yeah. Yep. We pulled back perfectly to this um, 3645 level and started trading higher. Then we talked about how the 50% uh, would be the next resistance. And well, we blew right through that. So as long as we're above four, copper's in good shape. Like I said, you know, it, it, above four, we're going to start pulling up. And um, so everything looks good. Metals are having a good, good week, good couple of weeks, really. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the dollar, also found support. We talked about this level, you know, the 102.32 being minus support because we stopped at the third of a third of the square up here, came back down. So it's like a one third of the square correction, which is sort of normal. And now the big test test is to see if we can get trade above the 103.60, mm -hmm. which is 50% of the square from the high in high last October. So once we get above this, I think we should, I mean, clearly we should get at least a 105. And if bonds and everything else is pointing in the right direction, we should probably trade higher from here and it's eventually true. probably get to 107. Let's see what, mm -hmm. what happens if we do a, a, B, C, D here. So there you go. Almost. Yep. Almost. So we can get up into that area. Mm -hmm. But we need to get about this 50% um, of the square first. That's the only. That's the key test right there. So here's the dollar. The weekly chart looks pretty good. It, long, you know, my basic uh, line here is as long as we're above the 90, which is around, let's say, 101, 100 and a half, that it's in a very positive position. Big consolidate Again, another big consolidation. Uh, but to me, this looks like if we can get above that 50% on the daily, dollar could really move up very strongly. Um, so we have to be ready for that. So let's watch. We have an inside week this week. We'll see how mm -hmm. it moves next week. We can take out this week's highs, which it looks like it could, which would also mean that the daily 50% of the square gets taken out. And if those things line up, I think dollar's ready to move. That's that. Let's look at the Euro. So on the Euro, we had this 108 level that's in green was the sort of the balance point. It's also 50% of the square on this 72 degree chart. And long as we're above it, you know, Euro's more or less on firm grounds. And if we, if we get above this 108, I'm looking for it to probably get back down and test the old lows. That's the story. <laughs> the, it's probably in the same area where that half square on the, the Dixie is, the dollar index. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's Yeah, it's very close. Mm -hmm. So here we got up to the quarter of the square and uh, found resistance, turned back down. From here, I'm really looking for it to weaken, at least to come and test 108. And if we take that out, then obviously, you know, it's going to speed up to the downside. It could set up, I mean, this might be a little bit premature, but hey. Yeah. So you can see it's the same, you know, dollar going up to that 72, close to the 107 <laughs> yeah. level, right? Yeah. yeah. It's the opposite yeah. of that. Get down to the 105 level. We'll see how it plays out. For now, mm -hmm. above 108, it's it's more or less firm. Real weakness will start below 108. That's what I have to say about that. So there's the 108 level. That's the dashed line in the middle. And we're well above it. But heading down, we have an inside week also. So we take out this week's lows. Next week, we can expect it to get to 108. And, and who knows, maybe even take it out. We're also doing a little bit of a triangle on the weekly, if you guys notice. Mm -hmm. Right there. Which, to me, you know, normally, it, I would say the breakout of this triangle is probably not going to be a slow-moving, crawling no. one. It might be a quick, quick one. So watch out. You know, we're in the middle. We're moving towards one of the other lines. Looks like we're moving towards the lower one. So keep an eye on that. I'll leave the triangle on there for next week. Anything you want to add to that, Ben? No, I think that's Whatever right. That. It's it's like a lot of these commodities that we're triangulating. When they break out, the move is is pretty violent. Yep. Yep. What else do we have here? Let me see. We talked about the Hang Seng. We called out this low famously. Mm -hmm. And Made a nice uptrend, sloppy, sure, but you know, crawled up. Now we're, I think, 
the hang tank's in pretty good shape, you know, especially if we can hold above this low we made last night. So 16, let's say 16,550. If we can generally hold above that, I think it's in a very strong position. And uh, above like 16,100, it's still in a very strong position because mm -hmm. we're well off the lows. And the resistance is 1,800, 18,054 18, to the upside. So keep an eye on that. See how that mm -hmm. works out. Are you looking at natural gas this week? Yeah, we're just at the same, same chart. Just we're looking at the pullback, you know? Mm -hmm. Seeing if we can hold, make a, make a higher low here. Yeah, it looks good. I'd be surprised if we take it out um, because it's such a good square, such a clean square. You know, we're down True. 135 degrees. We're holding it really well. And, of course, natural gas being natural gas probably get tested a few times. We'll see <laughs> how one false <laughs> break even. <laughs> yeah, it, definitely. Um, we'll see how it plays out. But for now, 153 is sort of the main support level. And if we get under that, we really have to start doing some extra work to see where the next support levels come in. Mm -hmm. But for now, 153 seems like it with the potential false break potential hanging over there. So we'll see how that works out. There's the Dow. Not much to add. We got very close to 180 degrees. And we did click out 100, 360 bars into this high. This could be viewed as a false break after that mm -hmm. 360 cycle expired. So mm -hmm. we're watching that very closely to see how that ends up. If that's a false break, we need a couple, three days down and so far, you know, we had two days down. You got <laughs> so, two. So everything's leaning like we have a high in some of these industries. So we'll play it like that and see what happens. The best one is the cash so far, which did give us a lower high, you know, perfect square. I'm sticking with that. <laughs> nice. All right. That's all I got. We can move on to you. Get it, throw it back to you and cover all the commodities. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Good coverage. All right. Thanks, Ben. NASDAQ. Well, we're coming back to test that test that square. Yeah, we are definitely going to be testing that square. And uh, the trend line. And the trend line. And it's all coming together, you know, with you know, the timing that you were talking about in the ES. And we'll we'll mm -hmm. see on the on the the bigger picture, the weekly and the monthly, some timing that, you know, if you're a long term bull, it's gotta it's gotta give you some caution. Uh, and that's yeah. that's the thing that we're looking at. Of course, we, you know, we had the lows in October of 22. We've been rallying up since. We're now, you can just see the visually. You can see the difference, right? Here we're moving really quickly. Here we're moving quickly. Here we're moving quickly. And now we're yeah. starting this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the momentum dies out, and the sellers start coming in, and the buyers can't keep price up, and. Mm -hmm. So what we're watching is we're watching this full square level and, mm -hmm. and all the levels, by the way, of all the markets that I cover are on a Google doc spreadsheet, which I'll send the link to when we send the link to the show, uh, here in the NQs, you know, call it 17,900. That's, that's the critical spot right now, right here. Mm -hmm. If we, if we get below it, and then as we always say, if we get stuck under it, then, and, and you know, get lower highs off of this high, and we got to look at, you know, maybe it's a it's a bigger correction. I mean, minimally, we're going to come here and we're going to test this half square where we've got, you know, this the previous high. And then after that, we're going to come down into here, into these levels. Right. Uh, I was looking for, see if we had any any timing that was, you know, spot on. I mean, we had a well, 99. We're up 90, 90 up there at the high. Yep. So That's 90 right. by 99. It's not terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it bears watching now let's let's look at the um at the weekly because this is where where i'm starting to get a little uh spidey sense kicking in with timing so so we're getting stuck on the 90 here and this is off of the covid low right so here's the mm -hmm. covid low this is a square of you could say 60 90 you know it's 30 divisions of 30 so we're up 90 we're stalling here Right. We, mm -hmm. we, we tapped it. We tapped it. We tried to go through, couldn't hold it, tried to go through, couldn't hold it. Now we're getting under it. We close yeah. here for the week. We're under it. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing, Barry, is from, from here, from this higher low, from this January low to the high is 60 by 60. 
perfect. Yep. You and know, that's, the that's not days, that's time. weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. What were you saying? Sorry. No I, said, no, I said the market can't give us any more signs. I mean, all the signs are there, I think. Yeah. And that, it's like, again, it's up. another, it's a bigger picture, weekly basis, you know, squared out mm -hmm. at a 90 from, you know, 2020 lows. So it's something to look at. And oh, and by the way, yeah, we had 210 here, you know, a week or so yeah. off of a 210. Mm -hmm. So 90 by 210. Now let's look at the monthly. This will, this will even freak you out even more. So if we if we're looking at here from the great financial crisis lows March of 2009 to the high we are 135 by 180 it's another good square that's a big one yeah i mean this is this is 180 months so this doesn't come along very often nope just a few times in a trader's lifetime probably and and that's that's a major timing cycle there now is it going to be super significant? Are we going to crash off this? We have no idea. What we have to watch is we note that and we know we had the 135 in price. And so now we say, okay, do we get do we get a turn? Do we take out this month's low next month? That would be a pretty pretty important thing to note if that happens. Mm -hmm. Plus do we're we up 18 months on True. the on the last leg, which is really right important. Mm -hmm. So there's there's all kinds of you know, we're not trying to be scaremongers or anything, but there are all kinds of major uh, red flags, big, <laughs> yellow flags, <laughs> big time frame. Yes, big time frame squares and and cycles that are hitting right in this time frame. Whether it's March, April, May, any anywhere in here, these things are all hitting, and we just have to be aware of them, and then be cognizant of as we're watching price action. Do we see a change in character from the you know the crazy uh, you know, sort of melt up behavior we saw for the last two, three months, because mm -hmm. that's how it transitions. Right. Um, anything else you want to add here on the daily, weekly, monthly? No, I think these are really important. We saw it in the weekly. We saw it in the monthly. Mm -hmm. We're seeing them come together on the daily. And this is what we talked about, you know, when we did the um, meta talk last Tuesday. Yes. About how, you know, you, you, you can, sort of frame the monthly, then we can look at the weekly to see where it comes in. Then you can, you know, zoom in into the daily. And we kind of have that uh, on a, on a big way. So on these big indices. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So uh, take note, everybody, please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh, let's jump over to Bitcoin, which is also interesting. And, and I put, I put a little GAN fan on here just to show people kind of how, how these, these angles work. And I know Barry, you like to do a lot of work, so you can you can definitely comment on this too. The other thing I wanted to to, to notice on this Bitcoin chart, and then we'll talk about the GAN fan, is look at how harmonic this thing is. As crazy as it is, look look at how it respects. The, look where the high came in, right on the square. Look at where this high came in, timing and full mm -hmm. square, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at this, and the, this and price all the action. Percents are very legit. The fifty percent, they they you know they re get a reaction there. So mm -hmm. so the the key thing with this is we have made a high. You know I don't know what that it's. Remember this is just a daily, so we're not making big you know big picture pronouncements here or anything. But on a daily basis, we we made a high at the full square, have reversed, went mm -hmm. blew right through the half square, and so now we got to see: do we get stuck below this half square? If we do. Then we then the then the the focus is going to be well what happens here at this full square, I mean technically, you know from a structural standpoint this thing could come all the way down to what is that about fifty two fifty three thousand and still be bullish totally yeah but now let's now let's talk about the Gan fan this yellow line is a one by one that means mm -hmm. one unit in price for every unit in time. Right, so that any mm -hmm. any time price hits this, it's squaring these lines. This is a two by one. That means two units of price for one unit's time. That's a four by one, and that's an eight by one. Mm -hmm. So initially, out of the hole, we were doing an eight by one. Then we lost the eight by one, and then it became a four by one. Well, mm -hmm. now we've lost the four by one. So we're going to correct back to this two by one at some point, whether we go sideways and meet it here. Or if we pull back, we're going to come meeting it down here. Mm -hmm. 
And then we want to watch and see, can it hold that two by one line? Because if it doesn't, then we're coming back to the one by one. Anything else you want to add in explaining the GAN fans or helping people that may want to work with them? Well, I, you did a really good job. That's kind of how you use it and uh, to measure the momentum. Also, you could drop that, you know, you can take that same fan and put it to the low ab above that. That's another way to do it. Yeah, you can keep, put it there and see where that line comes in. I mean, this is why GAN had so many lines on coming off of every <laughs> right. high and, then and you low, could, right? You could see, look, this line intersects with the full square, so that's mm -hmm. a probably a good, good place mm -hmm. for support. No, you did you did a good job. It's um, it mainly it's just scaling it correctly, so you have the right scale and right. and uh, one by one is correctly placed. And yep. you can say yours is because it cuts across all the squares perfectly. And once right. you have that, rest is easy. Yeah, the the fan the scale on your fan has got to match the scale on your chart. Yep, for sure. If it doesn't, it'll be off. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's it's just uh, it's an opportunity, you know, with this thing that we're screaming up to show, you know. This is the extreme momentum. And when you lose these lines, you kind of, exactly. you go to the next line as the momentum yep. wanes. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's jump over to the commodities. We've been talking all year and probably for the past year about how they were correcting. They were trying to bottom. And then after we have some bottoms, then we got these triangles. Well, the triangles are all now starting to break. And mm -hmm. we're starting to see the massive moves out of there. Coco, we talked about a little bit ago, you know, during your segment is a is a textbook example of what happens when you break out of one of these big multi-year triangles. So we're gonna we're gonna take a quick run through the commodities today because we want to look at you know things that are in different phases, all sort of setting up very bullishly, which which again, if you're looking at it from a macro standpoint, you can sort of see how money's flowing, right? It mm -hmm. maybe is starting to come out of the bonds from the bond rally, coming out of equities, going into uh, commodities. And that that's, I think, we're going to see when we take this quick spin through the commodity land. Let's first start off with corn. Mm -hmm. So corn, we've been, you know, we've been watching this, this market correct for a year and a half now, two years since the highs from the invasion, Russian invasion of Ukraine. We kind of dialed in this, this low where we took out all the lows, did an ABCD, and then we bounced up. Well, look at what happened. So we, we pushed up initially, found resistance at the half square, as we would expect. And now we're watching this pullback to see, do we get a higher low and and once we get this reversal that gives us that higher low, it gives us more confidence that this low is good and we're we're potentially going to catch a fast move. The real mm. safety trade here is to get a close over this half square, which is around 447. Uh, the aggressive trade is, you know, you get a reversal, you can enter on a on a on the daily reversal and see if if the momentum kicks in and we can see a move up uh in corn. Uh, the monthly has an inside bar. The weekly had an upside, upside, an up bar this week. So they're kind of in a phase that's waiting, right? They, they, they come after the daily. So once we get this daily to kick in, then we'll start seeing uh, a breakout on the on the weekly, a breakout on the monthly, and that's when then when we really get the massive move. So we're early here. This is this is the first pullback, so to speak, that we're looking for to see if we get that higher low. Any any insight you want to add on corn? Well, I think your balance point's the key at this point. We really need to get above that 443 level. Yep. And I like the ABCD. Let's see if we can get above. I think that will establish it. That's right. The half square and the balance point are, are the key levels that we got to clear. All right, let's take a look at soybeans. Now, soybeans, very similar situation to corn. It was kind of leading the the grains to the downside. We did this ending ABCD. We had a nice strong push up and the, the push up, you know, found resistance again, where we expected, which was at the full square here. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have one day, one day pullback now. And so we're just like corn. We're looking for the reversal. Yeah. Do we get a reversal? Can we clear this full square? If we clear the full square, then we're off to the races. Mm-hmm. The thing to notice here, though, is look look how much higher 
if we get a reversal up there, look how much higher we are than a previous, you know, previous high here that we were yep. coming out of the hole. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. So it's, it's, it's a lot like corn. It's had a little stronger move up. Um, we had a weekly up bar, monthly inside bar. So it's kind of the corn and soybeans are the same setup. Uh, we're just seeing if we can get those reversals and if we can clear, uh, you know, the resistance that's right overhead, these things will look really good for, uh, for a bull move because mm -hmm. the, the monthly and the, and the weekly will then sort of come in to support it. Well, pattern looks pretty close to corn and you yeah. have your level, the 1188. And I think it's the same, same deal. You know, if we can get above 1188 and that full square looks like we could be in shape, you know, good shape to move. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the low came in really nicely, that half square. So. Yeah, half square and an ABCD on timing. That was a nice one. Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump out to one that's already broken out of its base and is pulling back that we've been talking about, and that's cotton. And I put in this little ABCD because that's what it looks like it's doing. And if it does it, how great would that be? <laughs> yeah, excellent. <laughs> and pull right back to the half square, sitting on top of this very long consolidation that we were in. And this, uh, hopefully you guys get the sense, you know, we, we try and find the low, then we get that first push, and then you want to see the pullback sit on top of the breakout mm -hmm. and give us that higher low on top of what it, what broke out. That's when you get the strongest moves, you know, and, and that's kind of, a, that's kind of how the markets move. They go up, they break <laughs> out, they come back and retest, and then they really go. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what we're seeing in cotton. And this is a classic sort of breakout of a consolidation. So, yeah. And then, and this lulls everybody into sleep. Oh, this isn't going to rip. It's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And and all it's doing is coming back to test. And if the test is successful, that's when that's when the momentum players pile in. Yeah. Let's um let's also look at the monthly. Mm -hmm. I want to show you something here. So this is the another reason why. You know, it's coming back here. Is we're we're sort of testing and battling here at this full square yeah. on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So if we can get if the March close is over that over this full square, and then we get say uh, the April bar, the low is just on top of this square, then mm -hmm. you're going to have the monthly kicking in, and that's when the when we'll really really catch some momentum players coming into this thing. Right. Because you know, again, when you look left. This is where the look the full square is on top of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a key spot. I still like it. It's it's going nice and smoothly and slowly and allowing, you know, allowing people to uh to really see the breakout get tested and, and that's when we'll have the confidence that people will uh will jump into this thing. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a quick look at gold. I know you covered gold, but I want to show something here on the daily. Again triangle breakout strong move yeah. it's a it's a pattern that's happening in all these commodities look for it and and be able to trade it because that's where that you're going to be able to make good money mm -hmm. the, the reason i want to show this barry did a good review of gold there's there's not a lot for me to add but in in the square that i'm using look at where the lows are it's classic right mm -hmm. get above the square sit on top of it that's what you want to see. That's that's very bullish. Mm -hmm. We stay on top of this square, and it's triangulating too, so it's building up energy for the next move. Mm -hmm. I also drew in this ABCD showing it's similar to your targets. You were saying like 2,400, 2,300. Mm -hmm. this a, a simple ABCD takes us to 2,317. So Definitely has gold, upside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gold looks very, very good. Let's talk about the one that's been the star of the show this week, and that's uh, silver. Silver's had a heck of a week. Gold, it you know, was was screaming last week, and silver was kind of lagging. And this week, gold is sort of consolidating. You saw that sort of triangulation forming on the on the daily gold, and silver has just been pushing all week. Mm -hmm. So we we were. I was looking back. We've been stuck in essentially this half square you know there's a few deviations but stuck in this half square down to this half square since uh early 2023 mm -hmm. so 
a year and three months, a year and four months, 16 months. And now we're pushing strongly above the mm -hmm. half square. Mm -hmm. And the, the next big test, as you can see from where the highs are, is this full square at about 2650. We get above 2650, it's going to be clean sailing on silver. Let's look at let's look at the weekly. Yeah. Because you got I think you want to see the weekly and you want to see the monthly here. So here's your weekly. Big triangle breakout, breakout. At yep. last week. And now here's the follow through. And we we're we're set, you know, barring any you know big sell off in the last two hours, we're set to close above that full square of uh, that half square. Mm-hmm. A simple ABCD here on a weekly basis gets us up to 30 bucks. Silver with triangle in these markets, triangle breaks are big. And guess what? We could get pretty soon here a monthly triangle break. Yeah. Going back to 2020. Mm -hmm. So the key, the, the breakout level this month is around 2620. And then the full square is around 2660. So once once we get up, if we can get above and sit on top of this, then we're sitting on all the price action from 2013, which is big. It's a big base to 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 launch off of. Um, anything else you want to add on silver? Well, you did a really good coverage, um, and this is the time to catch these. You know, as we're breaking out, as they're getting close, like on the monthly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Yeah, this is the thing. This is the setup I really like because it's the monthly that gives that power, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you don't believe me, just go look at Coco's chart. <laughs> not, not that everything's going to do a Coco, but mm -hmm. it's an example of, you know, when you have a huge base or a huge triangle, a huge consolidation on a monthly basis that breaks out, the moves are powerful. You know, here it's a four or five, four or five year base mm -hmm. that it's been building. All right, let's go. Let's look at copper. I want to show a couple things on copper. You uh, you did a great job covering copper, but I want to show a few things. Mm -hmm. Again, what's the formation? Big triangle. This is daily, right? Mm -hmm. A B C D down, push up. Look at how we sat on top of that harmonic balance point. Nice. Now we're pushing up, and we're gonna we're set again to close over this half square that we've been stuck under for a long time. If you, if you if you eliminate this deviation in you know January February of last year, it's been since you know uh, June of 2022 that we've been under this half square. So this is a big breakout in copper. Uh, let's see what else I've got. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you this timing, this interesting timing. So here's the, I went back and I was looking at the timing of like low to high in mm -hmm. copper in back in 2015, low to high. 102 weeks, mm -hmm. 2020, low to high, 103 weeks. So I said, what if we put 102 weeks on this? What are we looking at? June, mm -hmm. last week of June. So late June, early July, this thing could make a high. And old. if you measure, yeah, and, and that's, so this, and again, look, it, we're just breaking out of the triangle. Mm -hmm. This week we broke out. Right. It's a weekly basis, we want to stay above, you know, like four. On pullbacks, if we can stay above four, it'll be you know the launching pad. Let's look yeah. at the monthly breaking out of a big triangle. Right, remember the targets you were talking about in copper. You were saying <laughs> you know over five. This triangle targets like up in here five thirty, five forty. Right there, yeah. Triangle breaks in commodities are big, and we're starting to, we're starting to see them on multiple time frames. When you get that monthly behind you, man, it's big. Mm -hmm. Notice also, Barry, look at the month. Look at the monthly here. We're right on timing and the low was sitting right on top of this half square. Remember the 381 you kept talking about for, for months and months mm -hmm. and months as we were mm -hmm. in that consolidation? Yeah. This month we are the low is 381. Got right on top. On top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and it's you big. know, with copper going up, I don't see how this inflation is going to stay anywhere near lows. <laughs> I, I don't I don't see it either. Not with the way these commodities are acting, you know, and if this, let's say this thing runs into, into June, July, you know, that that's going to, you know, the prices will be high yeah. for months and months and months, which will, mm -hmm. which will definitely filter into the economy. So we'll see. Yeah. But copper, copper looks good. All right, let's go to the next one.
crude. A couple of things mm-hmm. I just want to show you on crude. Simple ABCD gets us up around 100. Yep. This downtrend line is from the highs early 22 when Russia invaded Ukraine. And now we finally, finally broke it. Let's see if we can stay above it. It's trying. If it does, this is where we're going to get that push. Now, let me, let, me, uh, let me go to the higher time frame. There's one thing I want to show you. I know you covered crude, but there's something on the weekly I want to show everybody. We're breaking out of this big, big downtrend line wow. on a weekly basis and this triangle. Now, looks like we're going to get a close out of it. Do we get a full bar staying out of it next week? You know, we don't want to see this type of action again. It's possible. Mm-hmm. But if, as long as we can stay outside of this, again, the 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 full uh, the triangle breakout targets just under 100 on a simple ABCD. Mm-hmm. So crude, again, if like you were talking about with inflation, if crude's going up to 100, What's going to happen to inflation? What's going to happen to the bond market? What's going to happen to the dollar? What's going to happen to risk? Exactly. And and the it's not that we're trying to have the story fit the markets. It's the markets are telling us these different things are happening in those markets, and they kind of fit the story. (laughs) Yep. You know, it's it's we're not going at it from oh, what's our story, and then let's go find the evidence. We we found these things in the bond market. We found these these tendencies in the uh, in the uh, equity markets right now, and the timing. And it's it's it seems to be like the pieces to the puzzle are coming together. Whereas for the last you know three to six months to twelve months in the commodities, it was all this you know sort of jumble and correction and consolidation or triangles on on a big time frames that made it really difficult to know what's going to happen there right. well the decisions are starting to be made because the breakouts on the monthlies and on the weekly on the weeklies are starting to happen mm-hmm. let's end up with uh nat gas here hold on what do i want to show you here on nat gas barry showed you the the um the daily and the pullback you know we're seeing it right here's the same same chart yep. the bigger thing i want to show you is weekly monthly so weekly, we're battling at this full square. If we can stay, you know, not get stuck under that full square on a weekly basis, it'll set the it'll set the terms. And you can see what happens when it comes down here, right? It hit it here, then it made a little false break in 2016, and then we went. Here we had to chop around for like six, eight months almost around mm-hmm. this this full square support, and then we took off. So we got to watch for some sort of pattern to emerge here, making sure that we don't get a bar stuck under it. Because if we do, then we got issues. If we don't, it's it sets the table for a bullish move. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the monthly. Similar picture with the monthly. You know, here we spent several months, six, five, six, seven months here, here a couple months, here a couple months, here three, four months. Three, four, five months. We're into our second month. There's no urgency right now to get into this, but I want you to know and I want you to see on a longer term, bigger picture basis, it, it we're at an important level in, in natural gas. Mm. Now we're just looking for the bullish uh, bullish signs to show up for us to get involved. Anything else you want to add on the on the longer term about the uh, about natural gas here? Well, just that, you know, a couple of times we talked about how we're sort of crawling along the lows, support levels, and how far we are from the highs. And I think we were joking last week about, you know, you can't go wrong buying the lows. Right, right. (laughs) So I think it's not about just buying here, but it's really starting to watch it. Yeah, it might take a little longer because these are, you know, big time frames. But you, you really can't, you know, it's just the time to watch it because we're you know, crawling along the lows and, you know, the global events are all on edge to trigger something. So, you know, natural gas is just, you know, right there. Yep. Um, yeah. I think it's just something to keep an eye on and, and it's good that we, you know, talk about it once a week. Yeah. So the, the main theme I think coming from the commodity side is that the commodities are making decisions, right? They're starting to break out of, 
either triangles or big bases that have been forming for the corrections that have occurred over the last, you know, 18 to 24 months. Mm -hmm. And as they break out on these monthly time frames or weekly time frames, there's going to be powerful moves. And and those are the kind of things that we want to catch. So we we want to pay attention. We want to, you know, find good setups and then get involved because the risk rewards there and the and the the chance of catching a powerful move like the cocos of the world mm -hmm. is certainly is certainly there and we tend um, to kind of go in early because we start watching it at the earliest sign so we might be a little bit early but if, if you follow through with it it's going to show up because we're no in that question. we're in that zone so so Barry, what are you going to focus on next week? What where's your uh where's your attention going to be uh given the the spot where we are right now? Well, S&P for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nasdaq, S&P, Dow, all the indices and then crude oil. I think crude is really in a really interesting spot. It could, you know, we know uh it has more upside because we cleared the key resistant areas, we held the support. Uh so crude is a big one watching the grains a little bit, but mainly it's really crude and the um, S&P. Copper, you know, we have to kind of wait for a correction, a little bit of a correction. Mm -hmm. um, and and also one eye on dollar to see if we can, you know, get through. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the indices. I'm going to be watching all of them. I want to watch bonds because I think bonds could be the, the bowling ball that starts knocking the pins down. Mm-hmm. And then I want to I want to watch uh, silver and see if silver is going to keep pushing and we can actually get you know get the breakout out of that consolidation Push, that we've yeah. been we seeing in you know for years there. So uh, it's an interesting time. Twenty twenty four, as we we said a lot, was going to be wild, and I think it's going to live up to the billing. I don't think there's going to be a boring <laughs> uh, boring month in twenty twenty four as far no. as trading goes. And I don't think so. Uh, listen, I think you did a great job with the coverage. The timing that's coming in is big, and um, the opportunities are going to be just as big. We just got to be be ready for them and be ready to act. So, mm -hmm. listen, everybody, if you like if you like the work, you've been really supportive. We appreciate that. Please um, like, uh, share, share the link. Get your friends to to subscribe to the channel, and we we really want to grow the channel this year. Um, ring the bell and and co make comments and, and, and we appreciate all your support. Great job on the show this week, Barry. Thanks, Ben. And good job on the uh, commodities and the long-term charts, which we always forget to look at the monthlies. Most people don't look at them even once a year. So it, it, it's really important to bring those up. Yeah, it just gives us a really good perspective of where the the big moves can really come from. And you know, it's so you, important, right? The, the power in the monthly chart is unbelievable. So if you can make it a part of your routine, I think it, it'll really help your trading. Sure. Anyway, listen, everybody have All a right. great week. Uh, we'll get the show up as soon as we can. And, uh, and we'll talk with you next week. All right. Take care. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.